This is the Garrett AT Pro International Metal Detector, an all-terrain machine designed for a wide variety of detecting environments. The AT Pro's advanced features are designed for the expert treasure hunter, but its standard modes can be easily operated by the beginner. The AT Pro's advanced audio characteristics provide fast recovery speed, which is important for separating adjacent targets and in areas where good targets may be scattered amongst iron trash. It is equipped with a large 8.5 inch by 11 inch DD configuration search coil. This coil provides excellent detection depth, a wide coverage area, and it has been engineered for optimum performance in more challenging mineralized grounds. Operating at 15 kilohertz, the AT Pro is ideal for hunting coins, relics, caches, jewelry, and even gold nuggets. This detector features high resolution iron discrimination. You have settings from zero to 40 to allow you to set your iron discrim at just the right level to help separate good targets from bad. In addition, Garrett's exclusive iron audio feature allows you to hear the discriminated iron targets, which would normally be silent. Iron audio helps you avoid digging an undesirable target. Treasure targets are identified by the AT Pro, both with a target ID cursor on the LCD's upper scale and also by the digital target ID below. This digital target ID provides an even more specific value to identify targets more precisely. The depth indicator displays the depth of a coin-sized target in increments of five centimeters. The AT Pro also produces distinct audible tones based on a target's metal type and conductivity. The AT Pro is fully waterproof to 10 feet or three meters. It can be used to hunt in both saltwater and freshwater environments making this detector truly an all-terrain, all-treasure machine. The AT Pro includes both manual and automatic ground balance features. This gives you the ability to achieve stable detecting performance in challenging environments such as highly mineralized ground or salt water. The AT Pro can be easily adjusted for different heights and it has cam locks on the shaft for added stability. This detector is lightweight and includes a set of headphones, which can be used in almost all hunting environments, including wading into bodies of water. If you're going to completely submerge the headset, there are optional headphones available from Garrett, which are completely waterproof. There's also a full array of accessory search coils available for the AT Pro. This instructional video will acquaint you with the basic features of the Garrett AT Pro International and offer instructions on how to use this detector with success in the field. Assembly of your new AT Pro is very simple. First, select the upper and lower stem assembly. Holding it in front of you, select the lower cam lock, the one closest to the stem assembly. Twist the lower cam lock clockwise to loosen it. Then loosen the upper cam lock by twisting it counterclockwise. Depress the spring clips to extend the shaft. Next, press the two mounting washers firmly into place in the openings at the base of the lower stem. Slide the search coil onto the stem and insert the threaded bolt through the holes on the lower stem and search coil. Hand tighten the search coil assembly with the wing nut. Loosen and remove the upper cam lock collar. Slide it over the S-Stem's spring clips. Next, depress the spring clip in the S-Stem and insert the control housing's S-Stem through the upper cam lock into the upper stem. Hand tighten the cam lock collar, being careful not to over tighten. It is important to engage the spring clip into the first stem opening in order to maintain battery compartment access. Depress the spring clip in the lower stem and adjust to the most comfortable operating length. Then hand tighten the lower stem cam lock collar. Wrap the cable snugly around the stem with the first turn of the cable going over the stem. Insert the search coil connector into the four pin connector 
on the left side of the control housing. Notice the pin orientation of the connector before attempting to insert it. It's important to fully insert the connector to ensure proper connecting and sealing. Then, thread the collar into place until it is hand tight. If the O-ring is properly seated, the connector's collar can be easily tightened. If this collar is difficult to turn, the O-ring has not seated properly. The AT Pro's headphones connect on the right side of the control housing. Notice that this is a two-pin connector which also must be aligned properly. Again, push the connector fully into place before tightening the collar. Secure the headphone cable under the arm cuff by pressing it into the headphone cable clip. To power on the AT Pro, press the power button in the bottom left corner. To turn off the detector, press and hold this button for one second until the detector makes a second beep. When you've changed detector settings and wish to restore the AT Pro to its factory settings, press and hold the power button for five seconds, waiting until the detector produces a fast double beep. All metal items encountered by the AT Pro are referred to as targets. Garrett's exclusive Target ID technology provides two indicator scales to help identify targets. The lower scale is the AT Pro's discrimination pattern setting. These dark segments on the lower scale indicate what targets your detector will sound on. And when it sounds, a single segment will appear on this upper scale to show what you have found. The target ID legend just above will then help you to identify the target. Ferrous or iron targets will indicate on the left side. Non-ferrous targets that are thin or that have low conductivity will indicate in the middle. Thick or high conductivity targets such as thick silver will indicate toward the right. There are 20 upper scale graphic segments for target ID. For every metallic target that you find, you will see a target ID cursor. Your AT Pro will sound on every target that has not been discriminated. The AT Pro's digital target ID system provides a specific target value to help identify targets more precisely. Targets are identified on the LCD by number, with lower numbers being the most ferrous. The most conductive targets register toward the high end of the scale. Notice as I pass this coin in front of the search coil. The digital target ID for this coin reads between 70 and 73. Each target ID cursor above it has a width of five digital points. So you notice that the target ID cursor is near the number 70 when the digital target ID reads 70 or 72. This system, used in conjunction with the audio target signals, provides you with more information. It is important to understand that the AT Pro's detection depth can exceed target ID depth. In other words, you will sometimes hear faint, deeper targets that do not provide any target ID. Target values can vary based upon the orientation of the target in the ground, the amount of ground mineralization, and other factors. It is important to practice in the field to learn how these factors affect target ID. This depth scale will indicate how deeply you'll have to dig to recover any coin-sized target that you find. The AT Pro produces three distinct audible tones based on a target's metal type and conductivity. The low tone indicates ferrous targets such as nails, iron, or steel. Listen to the low tone in standard mode and also in pro mode. The medium tone indicates small, thin targets that are non-ferrous, such as small jewelry, foil, and some very thin hammered coins. Listen to the medium tone in standard mode. and also in pro mode. The third tone is either a bell tone or high tone, depending upon the operating mode.
When operating in standard mode, non-ferrous items with medium to high conductivity produce a bell tone. Such items include most coins and jewelry. In pro mode, these same items produce a high tone. Your AT Pro has eight settings for sensitivity. Use higher sensitivity settings for very small or very deep targets. Use lower sensitivity levels in locations where the detector is behaving erratically. Several factors can cause your detector to appear to behave erratically. Outside electrical interference, highly mineralized soil, excessive metallic trash, or the presence of other metal detectors. Often these interferences can be resolved with proper ground balance, discrimination, or by changing frequencies without having to reduce sensitivity. The AT Pro is capable of operating at four slightly different frequencies in order to minimize the interference from electrical sources, such as power lines or from other metal detectors. To adjust frequencies, hold down the pinpoint button and press the plus or minus sensitivity push buttons to change the frequency to find one with the least amount of interference. The frequency setting from F1 to F4 will be indicated on the LCD. Release the pinpoint button when finished. These frequency adjustments are small and will not affect target detection capabilities. Another important feature of the AT Pro is its ability to be ground balanced, either manually or automatically. Detector performance can be negatively affected by ground mineralization. It is important to achieve proper ground balance to cancel unwanted ground signals. This allows the detector to obtain maximum stability, giving you more performance, better detection depth, and more precise pinpointing. For automatic ground balance, press and hold the ground balance button as you bounce or pump the search coil from one to eight inches above the ground. When there is a minimal audio response from the ground, release the push button and begin hunting. The ground balance value will have been indicated in the center of the LCD. Low ground balance values indicate conductive soil. High ground balance values indicate ferrous soil. One important thing to note about ground balancing, when you ground balance the detector in highly mineralized soil, it's very important that you ground balance at the search height you will be sweeping the coil above the ground. Bob the coil as close to the ground as possible because that's where you'll be sweeping the coil, right above or right on the ground. In neutral ground, there's not much penalty. In fact, some ground is so neutral that the detector's current ground balance setting will not change when you attempt to ground balance the detector. You may want to use the manual ground balance function to ground balance slightly positive to enhance detection of small targets, or balance slightly negative to reduce detection of hot rocks and terracotta. Press and release the ground balance push button and continually bounce or pump the search coil above the ground. If low tones are produced, increase the ground balance setting using the plus notch to scrim button. If high tones are produced, decrease the setting using the minus notch disc push button. Press and release the plus or minus notch disc push buttons to make single step adjustments. Or press and hold to make large adjustments. Continue bouncing the coil and making adjustments until a minimum audio response is obtained, indicating the detector is ground balanced. The ground balance setting will be indicated on the LCD. 
Press and release the ground balance push button again to exit manual ground balance mode. The ground balance setting will be retained when the detector is switched off. To demonstrate the value of proper ground balance, we're out here in the Garrett test lanes and I've got my AT Pro actually ground balanced for neutral soil. So listen to it as I go over this highly mineralized pit of, of dirt here and listen to the reaction. It's clearly picking up the soil here, this mineralized ground. Now down here we've got a chip that represents where we buried a target. We've got a, a nickel coin that we buried a year ago. So it's been in the ground a long time. It's buried at an eight inch depth. So at that depth, as you listen as I go across it, I'm not consistently or even at all picking up a good target signal. I'm just getting ground response because I'm improperly ground balanced. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step off to the side here and use my automatic ground balance and pump the coil up and down above the ground until I get it into proper ground balance. I'm not getting that ground reaction. I've got good, clean, huntable you know, situation here where I'm not picking up the ground. So let's go back over this chip again. I'm getting a target response there and it's bouncing up toward a high signal. It's a little you know, iffy at times, but to me there's clearly something down there and it's showing on my screen eight inch depth just like it should show because I'm swinging the coil right next to the ground. If I get it right on the ground, it actually jumps toward the 10 inch depth because it's probably settled in a year past the eight inch mark. So that thing could very well be nine inches deep. The important thing to note though is I can move around it I'm clearly getting a good target indication, something that I would at least dig because knowing in mineralized ground it's going to move the target ID just a little bit. I know that's some kind of target down there. And once I remove some soil, I may find that I have a much stronger signal and much more, a much more consistent response. So being properly ground balanced like that definitely achieves better detection ability and gives you better detection depth. The AT Pro includes six detection modes, three standard modes, and three Pro modes. Simply tap the mode button to scroll through the six options, custom, coins, or zero in the standard mode, and custom, coins, or zero in the Pro mode. Let's start by first discussing the difference between operating in standard mode and operating in Pro mode. In its standard mode, the AT Pro provides full strength audio response regardless of the target's size or distance from the search coil. This consistent target response is called binary audio. In other words, it is either on or off. It either beeps or it doesn't. Listen to this coin as I pass it beneath the search coil at different depths. Many people prefer to hunt with this simple and consistent type of response. Standard mode is ideal for learning this detector because of its clean response. A target, based on its metal type and its conductivity, is simply reported by one of three different tones. A low tone, mid tone, or a high tone. In contrast, the Pro Mode allows you to hear much more target information. Pro Mode will actually allow you to judge a target's size and depth because it provides proportional audio. Another feature called Tone Roll Audio allows you to hear changes in the target's conductivity as the coil passes over. In Pro Mode, deep targets can be heard even past the point where they register on the target ID. Some will be so faint that it will be important to wear your headphones to hear them. Got a two ringer here. And this joker was deep, I'm telling you. Now, I was working in the pro mode right here. And as far as uh, a signal, it was very, very faint. So I kind of dug down some of the soil, but it read real high. That's a good solid piece there. 
That's a real pretty one. Look at the side, look at the depth on this. I put the shovel down there. And that's uh, well over a foot, very deep. What'd that read, Steve? It didn't read. It was so deep it wouldn't read. I was getting a high signal. Oh, okay. It was very consistent. Right now it's a 75 on the surface, but I had no uh, numeric indication, no target ID, just deep sound, real high sound. So if it sounds good and it's deep, go after it. Pro Mode also offers faster recovery speed for separating adjacent targets. This is important in areas where good targets are scattered amongst iron trash. That's reading around 85 right there. So. Let's see what that is. Yeah, right there. I'm getting iron trash readings all around that, but uh, that quarter you can really pick it out and it stands out, so. Listen to these adjacent coins in pro mode. You can clearly hear two separate peaks of audio response. When I switch to standard mode, these two targets are often heard as only one strong target signal. So, pro mode provides more target information this extra ability to distinguish targets can mean the difference between digging and not digging a good target. To demonstrate this, here is a coin lying amongst iron nails. In standard mode, this grouping presents a very mixed low tone response with only occasional higher tones. By switching to pro mode, the AT Pro is better able to separate these targets. This repeatable higher signal indicates that something other than just iron is in this target cluster. Here's a tip for trashy sites. When you encounter a questionable signal like this, change your orientation to the target. Sometimes approaching the target area with your search coil at a new angle will provide a cleaner target response. Pro mode allows deeper detection and more information on a target's size or depth. Listen to this silver coin in standard mode. Notice that the volume of the response is always the same until the target is no longer detected. Now compare the same target in pro mode. It sounds louder at shallow depth. and sounds fainter at deeper depths. This proportional signal strength helps the more experienced user understand more about the target's size, depth, and even its shape. Now that we've spent a little time reviewing standard and pro audio, let's go over the different discrimination patterns that are available in each of the two modes. There are three patterns in both standard and pro. Custom, coins, and zero. These discrimination patterns are the same configuration in either standard or pro. Zero mode is designed to detect every type of metal. All 12 discrimination pixels are switched on and high-res iron discrimination is set to zero, indicating that no metal targets have been eliminated. Switch to the zero mode to help locate a target when its signal is inconsistent. Such signals could mean the target is made of iron or that a trash target is close to a good target. Coins mode is designed to find most types of coins, jewelry, and other desired targets while eliminating trash items such as iron and foil. The high-res iron discrimination level has been preset to 35 to exclude most iron targets. In addition, one pixel of foil has been excluded. The custom mode can be customized by the operator and the AT Pro will retain the changes when the detector is switched off. Changes made to the zero or coins mode will not be retained after the detector is switched off. The factory preset for the custom mode is the same as the coins mode. Begin with this discrimination pattern 
and then use the iron disc and notch disc push buttons to customize the iron discrimination level and notch discrimination pattern. The AT Pro has 12 segments or notches of discrimination. Any combination of these segments can be switched on or off based upon your preference. There are two primary methods for modifying the notch discrimination pattern to reject unwanted items. The first method is to use the notch discrim and alim buttons to manually modify the lower scale's notch discrimination pattern. Use the plus or minus notch discrim buttons to move the target ID cursor to the left or right. Next, press the alim button to activate or eliminate the pixel located on the lower scale directly below the target ID cursor. The second method of modifying the notch discrimination pattern involves the use of only the alim push button. When an unwanted target is audibly detected while hunting, simply push the alim button to create a notch at that target ID cursor. The next time the AT Pro encounters the same trash item, it will not produce an audible signal. One good use for notch discrimination is to find a specific item that you're looking for. An example of this would be, let's say my wife was outside and she lost one of her favorite gold earrings. Let me just walk through a little scenario here and just show you how this would play out. We've got a couple of gold earrings right here, and if she was to lose one, and I still had the other one, what I would do is I'd want to scan this and see what this reads. So I'll just set it on the ground right there, and I'll go over it. I've got a reading kind of around 56, 60. So I'm going to go in here and notch out what I don't want to find. I want to get down to that specific reading and look for that particular lost item. So what I'll do is put a notch either side of where I expect it to be. So I've got about where it hits and maybe a, a pixel or two either side. So I've got a little bit of range because like anything else, it can change whether it's standing up or laying on its side depending on what its orientation is. I don't know how it was lost there. So I'm just going to verify kind of what I've got for my settings and basically bracket where I want that to be. And I'm going to run my iron to scrim all the way up to 40 because I know I'm not looking for iron. This is reading in the middle of the road. So I've got this set about where I want it to be. Now, again, this is just a demonstration, but if my wife had lost the earrings, let's say she was over here on the swing and it was lost out there somewhere, I'm going to take this and I'm going to just pitch it over there and not know exactly where it goes, just as if I knew it's somewhere lost in this general vicinity. So here we go, I'll toss it over there in those weeds. And I've got my settings uh, notched out to just one little bracket of where I think that should hit based on the other one that we still have. And I'm going to go in search of the lost earring using this notch discrimination. And you would probably work some kind of a pattern through here, go back and forth and crisscross the area really well. Use string if you need to to make sure you cover the ground thoroughly. And expand out from there. If you don't find it where you think it's going to be, just keep expanding your search. And just keep it slow and careful. You know, I don't know exactly where I pitched it. It's somewhere in this weed bed or through these uh, leaves here. And there we go. I've got uh, something that's hitting right there in the high 50s, just like the other one did. And right off the end of this coil tip, there's my earring. So we've done this little demonstration here using notch discrimination to find a specific target. We knew what it was. We knew a very tight range of where it fell. We tightened up our discrim, just left on three of the pixels right around bracketing where we thought it would be, and we moved in and effectively found the item. You can use this for other items that you're looking for, basically just eliminating what you don't want to find and narrowing down the range of what you can find with that discrimination. The AT Pro also features a high resolution iron discrimination adjustment. This level can be adjusted from zero, no iron discrimination, to 40, 
maximum iron discrimination. Use the plus or minus iron disc buttons to adjust the iron discrimination up or down. The small two-digit number above the words iron disc on the LCD indicates the current setting. One of the important features of the AT Pro International is the fact that it has 40 points of high resolution iron discrimination. That's important when you're hunting in the fields or anywhere where you might encounter a lot of iron debris such as nails or any other item that you don't want to dig. Those can mask or, or cover up a good target. Some people call that target masking, some people call it iron masking. In either event, you want to lose the junk items but still keep the good items that could be hidden amongst it. In this case, I've got my iron discrim set on zero, zero, uh, no discrimination right now. And here's a square nail that I dug recently. When I scan it, it reads 22, 23, 24, anywhere in that range. Now I've also got a little hammered coin that I dug yesterday. And if I scan this, it reads around 43 or 44. So if I had hammered coins lying amongst a bunch of iron square nails, I'd want to lose the square nails if possible, but yet not lose these targets that are only just a little more conductive. Now for an example, if I ran the iron all the way up to 40, which is the maximum iron discrim, I've lost the square nail successfully. It's gone, I'm not picking it up. But now if I put in my coin target with the square nail, I've also pretty much lost that because I've got in so much iron discrimination. So let's try going back a little bit and using that high res iron resolution. Let's set in just what we need. So I'm going to run it back down to oh, about 24 since that's about what we were reading. Still getting just an occasional click of iron so I'll go up another notch pretty much gone to the point where I would not dig that target. Just a click here and there. I could put in another click if I wanted to, make it a little bit quieter. And now if I put this nail on top of this coin as if it's lying amongst iron just like this and go back over it, I'm still getting a solid signal there. That's definitely something above the point of what I've discriminated. So I've got a good coin target lying amongst iron in the worst scenario you could encounter and I'm still able to detect it because I have this high resolution 40 points of iron discrimination. So that's the value, working over a trashy site, losing the worst of the trash and still being able to pull a good target from amongst that iron. One other feature to point out about this uh, high res iron discrimination is using it in conjunction with iron audio on the AT Pro International. Now we just showed by putting it at 26, I'm still able to lose the nail and yet the nail and the coin together, their combined conductivity are good enough for me to pick up. Now with the iron audio, when you engage that, it's going to make any target above your point of discrimination sound like a good target, either a mid-tone or a high tone. So right now, if I just put on iron audio and put the nail back, I'm hearing that iron grunt sound that indicates it's an iron target. Now by having the iron uh, nail and the coin together and the iron audio on, listen to it again. I'm getting the broken sound of some iron in there, the, the low tone of iron, but I'm also clearly getting a, a higher tone, a mid tone. That tells me there's something with that iron, that thing that I've discriminated out that might be worth digging right there. So again, the 40 points of iron resolution, combine that with the iron audio and you've got two powerful key elements there to use with the AT Pro International. The AT Pro also includes an iron audio feature that can be used both in the standard and in the pro modes. Iron Audio allows you to hear discriminated iron targets, which would normally be silent. Simply press and release the Iron Audio button to switch this feature on or off. When it is on, the words Iron Audio appear on the LCD. 
The low tone for iron is normally heard for any target whose target ID value is below 35. When iron discrimination is used, all targets below the setting, in this case 20, are silent. Only targets between 20 and 35 will produce the low tone for iron. Iron Audio allows you to adjust the range of your midtone. The midtone now starts at your point of discrimination, which is 20 in this case. With Iron Audio in use, the low tone for iron is heard for targets that ID below your discrimination point. To make sense of this, let's demonstrate with this iron nail. It reads as high as 25, so I run my high res iron discrim setting up to 26 to lose this target. With iron audio off, this nail is not reported audibly at all, or is, at best, a very broken signal. When I turn on iron audio, Everything below my setting of 26 is a low tone, so this discriminated iron sounds off loud and clear. By changing my mid-tone range using iron audio, anything I find now with a target ID value above 26 will sound as either a medium tone or high tone. Hearing the discriminated iron can really make a difference. The iron audio feature is even more impressive at identifying bottle caps. Since they are flat and have pretty good conductivity, they can trick some detectors into thinking they are a coin or some other good target. Start with the AT Pro in standard zero mode and pass the bottle cap parallel to the search coil as if the bottle cap is lying flat on the ground. Note that the target response is consistent with the audio of a good target. Then switch the detector into Pro Zero mode and move the bottle cap past the coil again. Note the subtle low tones at the beginning and end of the target response, indicating a questionable target that might be made of iron. Finally, set the iron discrim to 35, switch on iron audio, and check this target again. The distinctive low, high, low response now indicates a target that is unmistakably iron. Now that you've learned a little bit about the different tones that your AT Pro International makes, let's actually look at some real targets on the ground. Let's go over it in both the standard mode and the pro mode, and then also use Iron Audio to listen to the different sounds over three common targets here. So the three targets we have here are an iron square nail, a small bronze coin, and then a larger silver coin to demonstrate the three different tones. I'm gonna go over this first in standard and zero mode. I've just got very little discrimination set, so let's listen to the three targets and the three different sounds in standard mode first. First the iron nail. Then the small bronze coin. Medium tone. And the larger silver coin. got a bell tone there. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click real quick over to pro mode also in zero with very little discrim and go over the same targets again. Iron, again low tone, small bronze, a proportionate sound, small fainter sound but a good medium tone still. And then the larger silver coin That now has a high tone. This is again a, a high tone or a silver item in the pro mode as opposed to how it would sound in standard. I'll click back over. You've got the bell tone or in the pro mode the high items, high conductivity items have a high tone. Let's go over these three targets here, the iron nail, the small bronze coin, and the large silver coin first in standard mode and then in the pro mode and then we'll go back over them again with the iron audio on so you can hear them. First standard with an iron discrim setting of 25. Low tone on the iron. Mid tone on the bronze coin again. And on the end silver. 
has the bell tone. If I went to the pro mode, that same silver coin at the end would now have a high tone instead of the bell tone. The bronze coin still has a proportionate medium tone based on how close you are to it or how large of an item it is. And the iron still has a scratchy low tone. And if I go back over these with iron audio added, the nail will sound a lot more distinctively like a junk target because it's going to have a lot of that discriminated iron sound. Much more distinctive. The medium bronze coin still sounds pretty clean. It's a low conductivity item, but it still gives you a clean mid-tone. And the silver coin, nice, clean, clear, high tone. And if I went back over these in the standard mode, bell tone, medium tone, and clearly an iron jump target with iron audio in standard mode. Okay, so you notice the difference in these three targets between standard and pro on the tone ID, and then when you add the iron audio, there's a definite sound difference on the iron object that's been discriminated. So that's just a little demonstration to give you an idea of how those tones work to check out a target. Not all iron targets can be easily eliminated just by increasing your iron discrimination. This can be due to variables such as the target's size, its thickness, and its orientation in the ground. When you find a target with questionable or inconsistent target ID, use the iron audio feature to help determine if it contains discriminated iron. To demonstrate how an iron target's orientation can change its target ID, let me scan over this rusty nail. Scanned parallel to the center line of the DD coil, it reads between 7 and 10. However, if I approach the same nail with it perpendicular to the center line of the DD search coil, the same target reads as high as 33. To avoid digging such an item, I have two choices. First, I can further increase my iron discrim to eliminate or mostly eliminate this target from all directions. Or I can simply switch on my iron audio feature and check the target. Because I can hear the discriminated iron, I know this target is composed at least partially of iron. Therefore, it is not a silver, gold, or bronze coin that I'm hoping to find and I can just ignore digging it up. Now that you understand how to operate your AT Pro International Metal Detector and how various targets can sound, it's time to put the operational knowledge to use. For best detection results, keep your search coil at a constant height and parallel to the ground at all times. Walk slowly as you scan your search coil in a straight line from side to side at a speed of about three to five feet per second. Overlap each sweep by about half of the search coil's width to avoid missing any targets. In order to achieve the deepest depth of detection, avoid lifting the search coil at the end of your swing. Pinpointing is very simple with the AT Pro International. To demonstrate, we'll go through a couple of different scenarios. And what I'll do, I'll take a silver Spanish coin here, and I'll bury it in the ground, and I'll mark it with this colored chip, just so that it's easy to tell exactly where our target is. And then we'll go back over it and do these demonstrations so you can clearly understand how to pinpoint with the coil on this AT Pro International. OK, so what, what I'm going to do is dig a hole here. And I'm going to take my Spanish coin Put it down in the dirt, three or four inches there, bury it back up, and then for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take that colored chip and put it right there on top, kind of X marks the spot, that's where we know our target is. That'll make it easier to see as we do the demonstrations on where the pinpointing is actually happening with this coil. The standard method for pinpointing involves using the pinpoint push button, and what you do is find a target, then where you think it is 
Step to the side of it with your search coil before hitting the button. That way you don't accidentally tune out the target. So push the button and come back over your target, listening for the strongest response and looking for the strongest response on the LCD, where you have the strongest meter and the strongest audio. Now simply push forward and back to double check it, almost in an X marks the spot fashion, where you've got the strongest audio and the strongest meter response. You should be centered right over your target. In this case, we're centered right above our chip that we placed down, which is right above the target that's buried in the ground. Another variation on pinpointing involves pinpointing off the tip or the tail of this double D search coil. Its hottest point is right down the center line. So by using the same method, pinpoint your target, get your strongest response, and simply push the coil straight forward until you hear the audio dive off, until you see the meter dive off. And at that point, the target should be right off the tail of the coil in the center. You can do the same process by coming in and pinpointing your target, getting the strongest response, holding down that pinpoint button this whole time, and then pull the coil towards you until the meter and the audio dive off. And in this case, the target should be right off the front end of the coil. And then still another method, some people like to go without using the pinpoint button at all and they use a wiggle method, or some people call the DD wiggle, and that is finding a target, and without using the button for pinpoint, simply begin wiggling the coil off to the side of where you think the target is, moving it slowly toward the target's location, until you get an extremely repeatable sound like that. Move it forward and back just a little bit to double check it, and where you get the strongest repeating signal, you should be right over the center of your target. I like to take that a step further and not only use the wiggle technique on the coil, but also push or pull the coil to pinpoint off the tip of the tail. I'll show you that one final step there too. Wiggle the coil, lock in on where you think the target's location is, and then I simply pull it toward me to pinpoint right off the tip. Right now I know that it's centered on the coil and just off the front tip of it. Practice any and all of these pinpointing techniques in your test plot. Find the one that works best for you and get comfortable with it because you'll dig smaller recovery holes, you'll spend less time chasing after your targets, and you'll spend more time looking for treasure. And always remember to fill in the holes that you dig. The AT Pro can be submerged in water to a maximum depth of 10 feet or 3 meters. Use of the detector below these depths can cause leaks and void the manufacturer's warranty. The AT Pro can be used for searching in and along both saltwater beaches and freshwater streams, lakes, or swimming holes. Saltwater environments are challenging for continuous wave detectors, so proper ground balance is required for stable operation. Ground balance the AT Pro as your environment changes, such as moving from a dry sand beach onto an area where the sand is heavily saturated by salt water. Salt water is conductive and produces signals similar to foil. First, ground balance the detector to the area that will be hunted. Salt water beaches typically ground balance between zero and 20. If necessary, reduce the sensitivity until the signals become stable. Swing the search coil flat and at a constant height. The detector will be less stable in shallow breaking surf where the search coil is in and out of the salt water. In this area, the environment is constantly changing, making it difficult for the detector to stabilize. If necessary to improve stability, you can negatively bias the ground balance by several points. Simply press and release the ground balance button and use the minus notch disc push button to manually reduce the ground balance setting. Introduce only as much negative bias as is needed to achieve stable operation. If necessary, notch out the first pixel under foil. It is important to note that by notching out this pixel, detection of some small jewelry items will be reduced. The headphones included with the AT Pro are standard land search headphones. They can be used for searching along waterways and for wading. If you're going to completely submerge the headset, there are optional headphones available from Garrett 
which are completely waterproof. The AT Pro's LCD gives a continual indication of the remaining battery life. This battery level indicator displays four illuminated bars when the detector is operating with fresh or fully charged batteries. The AT Pro will remain fully functional until the batteries need to be replaced. When the battery level indicator is down to one bar, it's time to replace the batteries or recharge them. Nickel metal hydride rechargeable AA size batteries can be used or regular AA size alkaline batteries. Expect 20 to 40 hours of operation depending upon the type of batteries used and their quality. Access and replace the batteries by rotating the battery cover housing one quarter turn counterclockwise. Pull and remove the cap to slide the battery holder out. Remove batteries when the AT Pro will be stored for longer than 30 days. The AT Pro is a rugged machine designed for outdoor use in all environments. However, as with all electronic equipment, there are some simple ways to care for the detector to maintain its high performance. Avoid extreme temperatures as much as possible, such as storing the detector in an automobile trunk during the summer or outdoors in sub-freezing weather. Keep the detector clean. Wipe the control housing with a damp cloth when necessary. Disassemble the stem and wipe it and the search coil clean with a damp cloth. Replace the protective cover on the connector when not using the headphones. Your Garrett AT Pro represents the highest quality in metal detector manufacturing. Protect it and complement it with quality accessories from Garrett like these. Protect your new search coil with a coil cover to lengthen its lifespan. There's also a full array of accessory search coils available for the AT Pro, including a smaller 5 by 8 inch DD coil, two different size concentric search coils, and even a four and a half inch super sniper coil for tiny targets and for getting into tight areas. Garrett's Ram Publishing Company offers a number of books designed to help you find more treasure. You can find these books and others at your local Garrett dealer's shop or visit garrett.com for more information. The Garrett Pro Pointer Pinpointing Detector is an essential tool to speed your target recovery time. The Pro Pointer's audible and vibrating alarms increase in intensity as the pinpointer moves closer to the target. Garrett also offers an assortment of recovery and digging tools for the different types of environments from which you will retrieve treasure targets. Study your country's antiquity laws concerning metal detecting before you use your metal detector. A sincere request that Charles Garrett makes of every user of one of his detectors is that every place searched be left in better condition than it was found. When hunting, it's good to remember that any metal detector may discover underground power lines, explosives, or other items which, when struck, could cause personal injury. Always use reasonable caution in digging toward any target, particularly in areas where you are uncertain of underground conditions. Hard work, patience, and research are three keys to success with a metal detector. Another key is how well you understand your own machine. To truly understand your new AT Pro, spend at least 10 hours searching in the zero discrimination mode. Dig and study all of your targets during your learning phase. Begin hunting in the standard mode to practice your techniques. Switch to the pro mode after you become more experienced. Do not expect to achieve the greatest accuracy and success until you've used the AT Pro for at least 100 hours. This instructional video gives you a real head start on learning to use the AT Pro International properly. Watch it several times. Meanwhile, study your owner's manual and you will begin to develop hunting techniques of your own. Your success will increase as you begin to master your AT Pro International. It's up to you. Happy hunting.